The big news in racing this week was the successful test of a windscreen for an open wheel, open cockpit car in the hands of Scott Dixon at the IndyCar test at Phoenix International Raceway. But it turns out Project Cars 2 has been ahead of the curve because since the game came out in September, they have had this car, the Formula X. Now a lot of people call this car a futuristic Formula One car. But looking at the top of the car and the single roll hoop rather than a gigantic air box that has become so synonymous with Formula One since the 1970s, I personally think this is more emulating something akin to if CART hadn't died in 2002, where development of those cars would have ended up going. So in some way, this is a 2018 IndyCar just in an alternate reality. So what we're going to do today is race a 30 lap race here at the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. It's named Indy because it twice hosted IndyCar racing, once in 1978, uh, which was won by Danny Angaius, and once again in 2003, won by Sebastian Bourdais. So I guess we're doing the third IndyCar race at Brands Hatch, and this time we are going to be doing it shielded. Let's see how this turns out. So here we are at Brands Indy, ready to come down for a green flag. Now, we seem, or it seems like we're way back in the pack, but we're only 16th. <laughs> so uh, this, you can tell how short the circuit is. Uh, but ironically, this isn't really a short grid, considering the Xbox One limitations. The 1978 race only had 15 starters. So here we go. We're underway. Formula X at Brands Hatch. We're going to see if this uh, shield affects our vision in a hint, hint, it won't because it's a video game. But regardless, here we go up into, oh, I can't remember this corner's name. I remember Graham Hill, Paddock Hill, but I can't remember this one. Somebody will tell me. It's not Dingledale, I know that. I know Dingledale is a corner name on this racetrack as we go a little bit loose there. We do have Kurs. You'll see that. Kinetic energy reduction or recovery, if you're not familiar with what Kurs is. Essentially a hybrid system that's not a hybrid system. Battery operated push to pass, but you'll see that green bar on the top of my dash go up or down depending on how much Kurs battery I have to use. That will help me get down the straightaways in this car, but it won't help me get into the corners as I go in a little too hot there. Like I said, 30 lap race. We do have a mandatory pit stop that we will have to make. The whole field will. And I'm gonna take tires during that because it seems like the tire wear is pretty significant for these Formula X cars. Now, the game seems to say that these have a V10 in them, but honestly the sound, at least from the inside, sounds an awful lot like a turbocharged V8, which ironically enough the uh, kart series used both times they came here in 1978 and 2003. So that's close enough, right? This is such a fast circuit. Lap times are around 40 seconds. So it essentially becomes an oval race with right-handed turns because the track is so, so fast. And I know that when Champ Car came here in 2003, drivers were actually kind of complaining about the same sort of things that they were complaining about when they came to Texas Motor Speedway in the ill-fated race where they couldn't actually run the race because drivers were blacking out. The, the G-loads around this track were so extreme because you just constantly turn and you never get a break. Even the straightaways, like this front straightaway here, you can tell is not nearly straight. Up and down. As we get way, way too hard on the brakes and go off there. I use too much curves to make a little bit of contact with that car. And 
we have to just kind of reset ourselves here. I think we just banged wheels, though. I don't think I have any aerodynamic damage. Which would have really sent me back quite a ways. And here come pit stops, so... The two cars ahead of me decided to peel off into the pits. And we'll stay out. But we've lost quite a bit of time by going and exploring the gravel traps. I'm going for a day out at the beach here at Brands Hatch, but... Regardless, I don't know when I'm going to come into the pits. I've set my race strategy, but I didn't set exactly when I wanted to come in. I guess I'm kind of leaving it up to my own fancy. We're going to have a car looking to the inside. I didn't quite pull it off. And I'll tell you, I did a 15 lap test race of this last night, and it wore me out, so... 30 laps around here. This is a freaking video game. <laughs> you know, it's like, good God. I could imagine uh, actually driving an open wheel car with this level of power, this level of grip around here for even 30 laps, much less a full race distance, which is like 100 laps around here. We're going to curse abuse it down the front straightaway. That is a line shamelessly stolen from a YouTuber who used to be a YouTuber. I don't know if he even uploads anymore, but into the barrier. He used to always say curse abuse it. But then he like fell off a bridge or something and now he's no longer around. Or I unsubscribed from him. I'm not sure if I did, but I haven't seen him upload in a while. <laughs> As we work through the little chicane there. Still running way too wide in the final corner. Going to use a little bit of the curves on the front straightaway again. Try to get to almost the top of sixth gear. This car is kind of funny. You can get up into the rev limiter really, really easily in it, but once you're there, there's nothing more to get out of it. This is a fantasy car, I should mention, but it's not nearly as crazy as the uh, Gran Turismo fantasy car. Everybody's kind of knows very well the Red Bull X 2010, which has like a fan strapped on the back of it. Woo! So we almost got past there, almost made a little bit of contact as well. But yeah, this car is definitely a little bit more of a realistic take on a future Formula car, Indy car, whatever you want to call it. One third of the way through the race. Ten laps complete. Only 20 laps to go. Probably didn't need to take fourth gear there. Let's see if I can get through this corner just a little bit better this time. I haven't actually used the Curves battery at all on this lap. I'm trying to save it up or kind of get, get it recharged. So I won't be as fast in the straights, but I can kind of carry a little bit more speed into the corners because I'm not going into them at a thousand miles per hour, which is kind of nice. This is Grand Hill Bend right here, named of course for Formula One, Le Mans, and Indianapolis champion, Graham Hill. He's the only guy, ooh, as we almost lost it there, he's the only guy to win all three. The World Championship, Indianapolis, and, uh, and Le Mans. Went down in a helicopter. Oh, as we're gonna get past there. Oh, and I almost lost it there, so I was driving a little too poorly, and we lose that spot. The back end is definitely getting light on me. Fuel burning off. Surely the tires are burning off as well. We may be pitting, you know, lap 15, lap 16, somewhere around there, so about three or four laps. Seems like all the tires can give, about 15 laps. But now we can at least curse abuse it again. Oh, understeer. Oh, see, there you go. Tires wearing, and I did not compensate for it with my driving. 
I decided to go a thousand miles per hour in the Paddock Hill Bend, and that was a very ill-advised move. Curves abuse it down the back straightaway. One of them is Druids. Is that the hairpin? I think, okay, so I've remembered three of the corner names. I just don't know this one right here. It was Ken Squire and Dan Gurney on the 1978 broadcast. And Dan Gurney did like a track map. So yeah, that was Paddock Hill. This is Druids. And Druids works down into Graham Hill, which is this left-hander. Down the back straightaway, into this little left-right flick, which I just decided to run off the course for. And then this corner has a name, and I almost lost my name at it. We're going to curse and use it down the straightaway. We're going to try to get back around him, which we do. Can I slow down for the corner, David? Oh, side by side. Yeah, he's definitely stuffed in there, but definitely smarter than I was. We are now officially halfway through the race, so we can come in at any time. Make it into the pits, or make it the rest of the way. We are in the pit window, as it were. In the third gear. Even at 16 AI, the open wheel cars I find are affected a little bit by the physics bugs, or I guess the lack of physics that the Xbox One just can't handle. These cars are definitely a lot more twitchy when you get AI out there than when they are in private testing. You have to add a ton of rear downforce, you have to take a lot of front downforce out to get them drivable, otherwise the back end is always going to want to come around. But you go into private testing, you can put the default loose setup on and go two seconds a lap faster. As it looked like, we had a little bit of contact behind me there. Don't know if I caused that. I probably did. So we're probably going to come in within the next two laps. So I'm going to come on, come in at the end of lap 18. So we'll have 12 laps remaining. That way, I won't be coming out of the pits on cold tires and then just have to warm them up. go, past the second sector. We're running faster and faster because that fuel load is burning off. I'm probably still going to finish last. I don't know if the AI take tires uh, when they'd have to do a mandatory pit stop in a race like this. Did you say we were P4? Cool. We'd be in the podium spots if I hadn't given up that uh, spot early on or a couple laps ago. And if I hadn't gone to the beach a couple times, we'd be in really good shape. So we're coming into the pits this time around. The pits are very, very narrow here at Brands Hatch. And I just let a car through there. So we've got to make sure we don't cause all sorts of mayhem by coming into the pits. We are in and coming in for our stop. Oh, missed the pit. That was smart of me. So we're going to have a quick fuel hookup. Shouldn't be too long. Tires are done. And, uh, well, there's repairs being done. I had a strategy. I told you not to repair the car. Oh, well, here we go. Back out. 11-second pit stop. Not an amazing stop by any stretch of the imagination. Now, this pit exit is a huge bugaboo. Huge bugaboo. We have to be really careful with this. Otherwise, we are going to get in big trouble. So, thankfully, my wide Formula X car actually fit through there. Now we're going to find out where we actually ended up in terms of, well, there's a car behind me. So we may not be last, we may be last. I don't know. Regardless, I'm going to race him. Until I hear blue flags, I'm not getting out of the way. Yeah, I'm one lap behind. That doesn't mean a whole lot because there's probably a car that has not pitted yet. Remember, I was in fourth place. I made my stop. So there's probably a few people out there. As we block that car pretty effectively, 
into Patakil. And the Druids way, way out wide. Thankfully, he didn't capitalize. We have enough curves now that I feel kind of confident in abusing it a little bit more. There you go, best second sector. So I made up for the first sector. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> really getting the back end out there. Coming onto the main straightaway. Back into Paddock Hill. I think I may be entering too low. Kind of killing my exit speed. Into Druids. Ram Hill. Back end stepped out just a little bit on me. Car behind me really got out wide there. We come out of the pits right around that car. It's kind of painted like a Marussia. Oh man. Well, see, this is why I wanted to add a mandatory pit stop because this track is so fast for these cars. Overtaking is a little bit difficult, but you always be in traffic if there's always cars coming in and out of the pits. And that's exactly what we've done here. But boy, that red car is all over the back of me. We're going to have to be really crafty here if we're going to keep them away from me. Interesting, we have the Stig as our spotter for today's race. I guess my buddy, uh, the American, could not afford his, uh, his uh, passport or something. I don't know. He'll have to let me know in the comments. But anyway, here we go. Down, down back into Paddock Hill again, or into Graham Hill. So many hills. So many hills on this track. Getting down, almost getting on that curve there. Side by side, we got to have the curves of using again. Just absolutely having that straight line speed. Spotter is upset with me. Apparently he thinks my lap times are not very good. We definitely have a bit of a truly train going behind us. It looks like to me anyway in the mirrors. Oh yeah, there's about four cars back, four or five cars behind me. But hey, if it's all for position, do I really care if I'm hurting their feelings by driving slightly slower than they are? Nope. Oh, well, that was much better. Much better in a turn one, so that wide entry really is what I needed to do there. And then I was a complete wuss on the exit of Druids. back straight away just a little bit of a lift for the chicane probably got in there a little bit too wide should have really caught that exit curve on the curves down the main straight away all the way down to zero so we're gonna have to take a lap or two and recover all that energy it would not surprise me in the least since I heard IndyCar's plans for 21 or uh, 2021 are to make the cars louder, that we go back to something like, or we see something like this for 2021 rather than what we have now with slightly quieter V6s. I think people would, you know, prefer V8s. I think the drivers would prefer about 100 more horsepower. So, hey, it seems like. Uh, Slightly Mad Studios has a pretty good idea of what an open-wheel car should be like in uh, the year 2018. Maybe they can consult. Can get way too wide out there. We have to use the curves down the back straightaway just to kind of defend that position. Carry the speed. Not, no, that was bad. That was poor through the final corner. 
So I have to use all that curves in the front straight away. The track is really rubbering in, by the way. It's changed quite a bit from uh, the start of the race. I had that pointed out to me by my spotter friend in the comments about the NASCAR race, and I'm really noticing it in this race. It's kind of funny. Pretty much everybody is using the same groove, though, so the rubber is really just being laid down kind of on the same track. It's definitely a one-groove racetrack right now. We're here on lap 29, so two laps to go. We'll go down two gears, through Paddock Hill, into Druids. Just try to get those apexes. Graham Hill. Ooh. Maybe used a little too much curb, or curves, a little too fast there, and now that's a little too much curve, but Curb Curs, introduce yourselves. So on the button, last lap. Now two gears in the fourth. Definitely trying to be a bit kind to the car here on the last lap. We don't want to have any too spectacular moments. And those cars behind me, I think, finished the race. <laughs> so I suspect I was about to go a lot, another, another lap down. Why I'm still have a... Well, I must be last. Either I'm last or the leader got around a few cars that were racing me. So down the main straightaway, we probably finished last, but screw it, it was a fun race. Oh, no, we didn't finish last. It's okay. It's okay. Rob, Rob finished last in that Benetton-looking car. It's okay. I didn't finish last, everybody. So that was Racing Shielded. Did you enjoy this video? Uh, sorry I, had, I took tires. I shouldn't have taken tires, but, you know, I wanted to show off the pit stop, and we still had a great race. Still a lot of competition, a lot of close competition. Uh, do, again, this is always the question I ask in these videos. Do you like uh, windscreens? Do you like shields? Do you prefer the halo? Who knows? Uh, that's always an interesting discussion. And have you driven the Formula X car? Let me know some of your thoughts on it because I think it's a fantastic car. Even if it is a fantasy car, and generally speaking, <coughs> Vision GT, I don't think that fantasy cars really have a place in racing sims. But uh, this is a fun experience. Or this was a fun experience. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. That was a lap of Brands Hatch, by the way. That's, that just tells you how fast these laps go by. And we'll see you in the next video.